Controlling the planet's climate. Sounds like science fiction, right? Well, it isn't. For one thing, we've been manipulating the atmosphere for over 150 years now. Through the combustion of fossil fuels, we've increased the planet's temperature by one and a half degrees. Fahrenheit. And nobody was even trying. Imagine what could be done if we purposely tried to change the climate. Global warming is made possible by an entire planet's worth of people pumping millions of tons of CO2 into the atmosphere. What if we started taking CO2 out of the atmosphere? Could we reverse global warming? This is called geoengineering, or climate engineering, the deliberate manipulation of the Earth's climatic system. We need hundreds of millions of people, entire industries, entire nations to make a dent in what we're putting into the atmosphere, right? Could anything less make a difference? Could a single individual change the climate for the entire planet? Russ George is an entrepreneur and environmentalist who thinks that he can not only engineer the world's climate, he can reverse global warming with nothing more than algae. What would give him that idea? A volcano and salmon. For years, salmon stocks in Canada have been in decline despite efforts to replenish the population. Many communities depend on the salmon for their livelihood, namely the Haida a small native population that has been living on the islands off the western coast of Canada for over 17,000 years. Their very cultural identity and existence is deeply entwined with the health of the area's ecosystem. In 2009, all of a sudden, there was a massive salmon run that seemingly came out of nowhere. Scientists and the Haida people were happy to see the increase in salmon numbers, but they were puzzled as to exactly why it had happened. The year before, in the Aleutian Islands off the coast of Alaska, a volcano erupted spewing ash into the atmosphere and into the surrounding ocean. But instead of wreaking havoc with the marine ecosystem, it actually caused an explosion in algae formation. This is called an algae bloom. Algae are tiny plants, and plants use photosynthesis to derive energy from the sun. Iron happens to be an essential component to this process. Because the ash cloud was rich in iron dust, it actually seeded the ocean with a kind of fertilizer for the algae. Now, as it turns out, salmon feed on the algae. With all that extra algae floating around, the salmon were able to grow big and strong and plentiful. But volcanoes are not the only way to dump iron into the ocean. People can do it too. Fill your ship's hold full of iron dust, sail out into the ocean, and dump it. Instant algae bloom. And algae doesn't just feed salmon. Like all plants, it breathes carbon dioxide. Make a large enough algae bloom, and you can essentially suck CO2 right out of the atmosphere. This is where Russ George and the Haida people come in. In 2012, he approached the Haida Council and told them, with their help, that he could replenish their salmon stocks. He chartered a boat, set out into the Pacific Ocean, and dumped 100 tons of iron dust into the water. It caused an algae bloom over 10,000 square kilometers in size, and outraged scientists, environmentalists, and governments all around the world. You see, besides the blessing of the Haida Council, Russ George did this without any permission, nor any backing from any government or any scientific oversight. He did this all on his own, an individual conducted an experiment that could have consequences on the entire global community. No wonder people were pissed. But did he succeed? Did his efforts have any effect on the global climate? 2012, the year of Russ George's experiment, was the 10th hottest year on record, and the extent of the Arctic ice cap reached a record low. 2013 was the fourth warmest year since record keeping began, and CO2 concentration in the atmosphere continued to rise. Maybe Russ George didn't put enough iron into the ocean to have a measurable influence. Only further experimentation could prove whether or not iron fertilization can actually change the climate, and no one's going to allow that. Not only does Russ George's experiment amount to illegal dumping and violate a number of international treaties, geoengineering is a risky, unproven science that could lead to unintended, unforeseeable consequences. Well, maybe not that. It's not entirely clear that geoengineering would even be effective against global warming. Research has shown that reducing our reliance on fossil fuels would be much more effective against climate change than any sort of crazy geoengineering scheme. The scientific method depends on repeatability. Without reproducible evidence, there's no way to tell for certain that Russ George's experiment could work. But the dangers of messing with the world's climate might outweigh the benefits. No responsible scientific institution would want to put the world in harm's way just for an experiment. The Earth's climate is an immense, complicated system that we're only beginning to understand. There's no way to safely tinker with it without inviting catastrophe. How much the Haida knew of George's plan is in dispute. But after the international outcry, the Haida Council severed ties with Russ George and distanced themselves from the controversy surrounding geoengineering. But in the year after the iron dumping and the resulting algae bloom, the rivers of the Haida people experienced a record-sized salmon run. It was so large, in fact, it overwhelmed their fisheries. But we must remember 
Correlation does not mean causation. Whether this was because of geoengineering or just a coincidence is unknown. So for now, the Haida people will have to hope that the salmon population returns to its natural levels without the meddling hand of an eccentric businessman or wait for another volcanic eruption. Thank you for watching. You can click there to see the next video about the lottery, or you can click down there and see another playlist we've done, or you can click up there and go to Subbable where you could support the show and it would mean a lot to us and we could keep going and making good content. See ya. <laughs> right. Good, I, I like it. I like it.